All right, Penn State fans, I got a question for you. Are you real upset about the Ohio State loss? Because what's interesting about this loss, and we just talked to a bunch of Penn State players, is they lost to the number two team in the country, and Penn State is not supposed to be about moral victories. But when you get down 21 to nothing, and basically your expectation is that you're going to get crushed, and then you come back the way you did, the, the, the consensus in the room was that there really was no consensus. Some of the players felt good that they came back, and there's a lot of pride in that. Some of the players were like, no, we lost. That's all there is to it. So what do you make of the loss versus the, the comeback? Yeah, I mean, when you get down 21 nothing, the writing's kind of on the wall. You already realize, and your quarterback's hurt. You, uh, you know, a loss is sort of assumed, and there were a lot of big scores being predicted uh, historically. Uh, Penn State's not played all that well out here, although two years ago they, they had Ohio State on the run. I, I don't think they're in the business of moral victories, um, certainly not anymore. You know, maybe a year or so after the sanctions, a couple years, it was okay. one thing. You know, I look at it like um, I can't be overly critical of mm -hmm. their performance or overly praise right. their performance because, hey, you know, the other team really put the ball on the ground a lot. Uh, in inside their own territory, gave Penn State short fields, and uh, also Ohio State fumbled on their way into the end zone uh, that would have made it fourteen nothing. Usually, when somebody does that, makes that many mistakes, uh, you know, a, a really good team capitalizes sure, on that. Sure, but there, is this a, this is the question? Is this a really good Penn State team? And look, when you're down twenty-one to nothing against a team that might be the best team in the country. Last year, everybody was all over Ricky Ronnie for the fourth down call. That's an excruciating way to lose a game. Penn State fans were furious. Two years ago out here, they blow a lead in the fourth quarter with JT Barrett completing 16 passes in a row. I guess my question is, for the fan base out there, I, I, don't, know, I don't know that this is a disappointing or frustrating loss the way a Minnesota loss was. Well, of course not. No, I, and I would agree with that. Um, you know, I, I don't know that that many people really expected Penn State to win. They, they can take, I guess, some solace in giving Ohio State their best game mm -hmm. uh, of the year. You know, that said, they didn't defend. There were a lot of things they didn't do that a really good team would do. So I can say to answer that right now at 9-2, and two, I don't think they're a really good team. I think they're a good team, certainly, can, and can play with a lot of teams. Whether they can go on the road and uh, take advantage of some of these mistakes, they weren't able to do that today. They got off to a slow start. They didn't defend the quarterback draw, had a couple drop balls that really cost them. Right. On the upside, I thought they played with tremendous character and heart, mm -hmm. particularly Will Levis. Yeah, and the comeback, yeah, Levis, Levis you know, showing a lot of spirit after Sean Clifford gets hurt. But that's really what's interesting about sports. The, the phrase moral victory is such, has such a negative connotation. But I'm telling you, down 21 to nothing here, if, if you could have said Penn State's going to get this to 20, that Penn State had a chance if Journey Brown catches a ball on a slant to tie the game at 21-21. Mm -hmm. um, because it all comes down to, Neil, this team is a year early. Yeah. I, I think next year, I, I keep saying maybe next year, they, they could win this kind of game. Mm -hmm. But I think they, That's if they don't lose a minute. So I think they the built a lot of positives here. Yeah. I think that this Penn State team this year came in and learned a hell of a lot about itself that they can. And if you want to call it a moral victory or not, yeah. fine. But they learned a lot about their character. Yeah, and, and, hey, they're on their way to ten and two uh, with a chance to be eleven and two. Nobody would have forecast the that. Rose Bowl is still a possibility. Yeah, and they uh, they will be in the conversation next year, top five, top sixteen, probably uh, preseason. And this is a building block toward all that. Um, you know, that said, there's just a lot of little things that they still have to get better at. They've got to, they've got to start better defensively. You can't come out and give up a 91-yard drive all on the ground when your defense is at giving up an average of 76 yards per game on the ground. So th that's an issue that, that they've got to get figured out, especially against a quality opponent. And I, I'm confused to what they're doing. And, you know, this wasn't a time to really get into this after the game because you only get a few questions. Um, but they, 
have had liberal substitution on defense. I've mentioned this for a couple weeks now. On the very first drive, um, Ohio State ran up the field and Penn State put their backup line in on in the shadow of its own goalpost. So I don't know if they think these guys are tired, if they're trying to um, coach them for, through, for the fourth quarter, that they may need them to be fresh. I know it worked early in the season to keep your defense fresh. But to play against Ohio State, I think you need your best players on the field. And, you know, both drives at the beginning of the half, Ohio State took control against Penn State's second team line. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Ohio State's impressive. Justin Fields is really, really good throwing and running the ball. And, Penn and State, Excuse me. And, and yet, you know, he fumbled twice. He, he gave – he, he kind of helped – encourage Penn State. He, he obviously has a, a real future. He, he's a pleasure to watch. He can throw the deep ball. He threw two gorgeous touchdown yeah. passes that Penn State had people in uh, position. Yeah. And you've got to make those plays too. So, uh, you know, uh, again, you know, the comeback, they deserve a lot of credit for that. How they, uh, you know, how they function throughout the game, you know, I, I think that there's still work to be done. And that's what it's going to take for Penn State to get to this level, being able to play complete games to where we're not talking about, well, yeah, but this, yeah, right. but that third quarter, yeah, but that fat, that bad start, well, the four quarter that, game. That interception, which really was the key play, I think, of the game. Levis was, you know, brought a running element and injected a lot of momentum into them when yeah. they were almost dead, and he drove the ball down to the, you know, the 20 Five yard line, and then on first down, they threw it with him. They put him in a bad position there. And I'll say, Journey Brown dropped a touchdown that would have tied the game. Yeah. I mean, you look, at the end of the day, no matter what we're talking about here, you put the ball in a guy's hands at the five yard line, he scores, tie game. Where do you go from there? Penn State can't afford those kind of mistakes against this caliber of an opponent. And it's raining here in Columbus. It's always raining in Columbus. All right. Uh, interesting game. I don't think fans are jumping off the ledge this week with the comeback, which is, again, interesting to me about sports is the way fans react. I didn't get a lot of reaction on social media of fans that were just irate right. like they were after last year's Ohio State. Well, they loss. know Ohio State's a great team. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching our video.